Here at Shepherd's Whistle Farms, the lambs are coming, and the weather's getting warmer. There's still snow on the ground, but the ground's muddy during the day, and it's frozen at night. That's about a 40-20 split, so that means it's time to tap trees. Pansy and I are going to walk you through what we need to tap trees, since she insists on being here. We have some good, sturdy buckets, and uh, we've got a strainer for when we get that tree stuff that we tap and we use that Clorox bottle for a funnel as we as we pour the sap from place to place this great big container we have here we'll clean off and we'll use that for uh, we'll use that for storing some of the sap we have quite a few of those big containers that we use before we start to boil down here on our sled you can see we've got a good drill with about a three-quarter inch half inch three-quarter inch bit some batteries, a hammer, and our spile. Now something important about spiles here, make sure you get a stainless steel one. We get ours from Lehman's. Um, do not buy aluminum ones. And there are some ways that you can make your own spiles and we'll do that in another, uh, we'll do that in another video. Animals are very curious about this process. The sap that you get is like sweet water, so they love to drink it. You'll have dogs, cats, any kind of animal that's around drink it unless you protect it. So what Mike is doing over there is uh, he's putting up a temporary fence around our grove of trees before we put our taps in. Our trees are box elder trees that we tap. They were considered to be trash trees here in the West, uh, but they are... Uh, and in the Acer family, they're Acer Nagundo. So anything that has the genus Acer is something that can be tapped. You can tap birch trees, you can tap some uh, plum trees and other trees, uh, some nut trees to get sap from them, but we tap box elder trees. They give about a 30, 40 to one ratio. A birch tree will give about a 90 to one ratio. So the different trees give different ratios for syrup and sap. We use box elder here uh, in Idaho. So, before we start drilling into a tree, we want to make sure we know where that taproot is. And so that taproot is right along here under the snow. You can see that there's a root that comes right down that way. So, Mike's going to drill a hole in there uh, with the drill that's about, oh, it's at a bit of an angle upwards. And he's going to go in about as far as my little finger. Now one of the ways that you know the sap is flowing is when you put your finger in the tree and it comes out wet. Or ultimately what happens when you do that, uh, when you put your finger in here and it comes out wet, where'd my finger go? There we go. Comes out wet or if you look and see, you can see it's already starting to drip. So you know you've hit the season just right. And that season comes uh, right after Valentine's Day. We start looking for that 40-20 temperature split. Now we look for trees that are at least a foot wide. You want to put only one spile in a tree that's a foot wide. And, uh, and this does not hurt the tree. You'd think it hurts the tree, but the tree heals right up. Some of these trees, you can't even tell where we tapped them last year because the hole fills right in. Sometimes we'll put a bung in the tree, but uh, we found that they heal better without the bung, believe it or not. Uh, the bung is to prevent insects or uh, diseases from getting into the tree, but we find that if we've tapped them right, that the tree actually starts to fill in itself before the season is done. So now those, uh, those buckets will drip for a while and uh, and we'll be back this afternoon to get buckets full of sap. We'll strain it and we'll store it. Uh, we're not ready to start boiling down yet. So here we are at the end of the day and for a first day of gathering this is pretty good. The flow will increase as the season goes on but we'll get a few gallons today to get us started. So Mike's going to be straining and dumping this right into our big 10-gallon container. Uh, he's got a strainer there to catch the big degree, debris. Uh, the dirt that's on the outside of this is not what's on the inside. The inside's been thoroughly cleaned, and it's just sat over the winter in the sheds. But uh, Mike's going to hang that back up and, and let it keep dripping. So that's about it for today. So we'll be boiling down our sap in a couple of weeks. And just a couple of reminders as you tap trees. One, try to tap trees that are indigenous to your area because those are the trees that are best able to gather that moisture from the soil.
And two, if your sap freezes, don't worry about it. You can still boil it down. Lots of people will tell you, or especially some of those extension services out there will tell you you can't use it if it's frozen. It's not true at all. We freeze our sap sometimes on purpose until we can boil it down. So don't worry about freezing. You just save all of that sap. And uh, happy tree tapping. We will see you in a couple of weeks when we boil the sap down. Don't forget to subscribe.